Hey guys, Dr. J here. In the previous episode, we continued searching for a way to Monument Island, all the while fighting policemen. We also encountered the first strong enemy in the game, a fireman. Shortly afterwards, we had our first death. And then we entered the Blue Ribbon Restaurant, where we learned about the shield, the infusions and the gears. Inside, we also met that strange couple that seems to be following us around. We then left the restaurant and continued fighting policemen on the rooftops of Columbia, still trying to reach Monument Island. Let's start off with those crates over there. We actually can't open them. I guess we'll need to drop down from here then and search around the skylights. That's right, keep on praying and leave me alone, please. We've only a couple more corpses to search. And I think we're done here. Let's hook up on the next crane. Okay, good. Now, can we open this door? Let's try it. No, it seems it's locked. Anything in the crates? Nothing. Okay, let's jump back on the crane. Yeah, there's no way you can explain that jump with just the skyhook being magnetized. Anyways, let's search this terrace and then go through the only door we have here. There's some food on the tables and even some silver eagles. Some more money on this table. And I guess that's pretty much it. Okay, let's try opening the door now. Actually, can we open this mailbox? Indeed we can! But why was there a first aid kit and a sandwich in the mailbox? Whatever. So, we've entered the Montgomery residence. It seems like the people living here are some kind of equal rights activists. Printing presses. That's quite the elaborate operation they've got going on here. Tim, the one they're after. Relax, guys. I'm not here to oh, hurt you. Shh. Keep your voice down. Okay, so the police are coming for us. Is there a way to get out of here without being seen? I must say, that's quite a nice house they've got here. Oh, we have a wallet here. Hmm. Seems like fighting for equal rights is not a well-paid job. Then again, if they can afford to maintain such a house, they're definitely not poor. Hmm? What's that thing shining on the cupboard? Oh, so they did have some money after all. Sorry guys, but it's for a good cause. There are some people sleeping here. Let's search the vanity. Nothing. So, from what I can gather, this house only has two exits. Looks like we'll have to fight our way out of here after all. Let's try opening this door. If nothing else, we can use it as a choke point at least. We still need to unlock the industrial accident achievement, so let's try to execute this guy. Great, we just need one more execution. It doesn't look like there are that many policemen here. I think we should be fine. Come on, let me execute you. There you go. Perfect. We've unlocked the industrial accident achievement, so we don't have to worry about getting into melee range anymore. Time to work on the pistol achievement. I'll just hold position for now. Hopefully I can lure them to come to me. Looks like they're not taking the bait. Let's pick up this health kit and go find them. Where did you come from? Seriously? Was that a fireman we just heard? Damn it, that's not going to be an easy fight. This cramped environment will actually give him the advantage with all the explosives he's throwing. Well, at least he didn't storm inside with all the policemen. Let's try looting the corpses before he arrives. Hmm, how do we want to deal with him? Actually, that turned out better than I thought. I didn't realize there was a turret outside. This should reduce his health at least somewhat. 
But he's back to attacking us. The most important thing in this fight is to dodge his explosives as much as we can. That's why I didn't want to fight in the house, but going outside with that turret still operational would be suicide. Let's try putting some distance between us. It's actually not going too badly. Hmm, where did he go? Seriously, where are you, dude? Is he outside? Yeah, I don't know why he went outside. He doesn't have that much health left. We should be able to do this. Okay, now we need to run away from him. When he gets to critical health, he tries to kamikaze us. The only thing we need to do when that happens is to just run away. Whew, so that fight went much better than I expected. Let's go deal with the turret outside now. Good, we've unlocked the pistol achievement. I guess the fireman exploding by himself did not count as a pistol kill. Thankfully he did quite a lot of damage on the turret, so we didn't have to waste a lot of ammo on it. Okay, so let's finish looting these corpses and finally get out of this house. Now that we've unlocked the pistol achievement, we can focus on using the machine gun. Its achievement will take a while to unlock. We need a total of 150 kills with the machine gun for it. By far the most out of all the weapon kills achievements. Ok, so this square is quite large, it will take us a while to search it thoroughly. There are some picnic baskets laying around we can check. Nope, there's nothing inside it. There is a voxophone on that table on the stage though. Let's pick it up. Gomshot came by the wagon at dawn. Man was just... He just transfixed by my trophy scalps. Asked about the white ones there. I said, well sir... If your quarry dwells in the jungle and beds down with the local color, why split hairs? <laughs> Not a chuckle out of him. Either he ain't seen a man go native, or maybe... Maybe too many. Anyhow, now he's got me hunting down this Daisy Fitzroy. Hope he don't expect me to stuff and mount her. <laughs> yeah. This guy really thinks he's funny. There's a kinetoscope here we need to use. The more I learn about Colombia, the more I'm starting to feel that the Vox Populi are freedom fighters rather than terrorists. I guess we'll learn the truth if we ever come across them. But right now, let's go back to searching this square for any useful items. Like this salt file and silver egos. There's another loot box here and I think we're pretty much done here. Let's see what's up those stairs. And we have another trash can we can check. It's empty again. Don't these people ever throw out stuff? Okay, that gate over there looks kind of promising. The fog is a bit creepy though. Alright, we can check the debris from the machine gun turret as well. Really? Nothing? Well, let's enter the creepy fog then. I swear, if we get sent to Silent Hill... Hmm, there isn't as much fog as it seemed from a distance. Is this some kind of secret society? If it is, they're not doing a great job at being secret. Fraternal Order of the Raven. So a frat house then. Okay, let's see what we can find inside. A lot of booze, I imagine. They were not joking though, that's a lot of ravens. Or crows. I can never tell the difference. What's that statue over there? John Wilkes Booth? They really should clean the guys' statue. And I very much doubt these guys are friendly. They do go down quite easy though. Looks like we've missed one. <laughs> Seriously, another one? Well, as long as we don't lose any health, it's fine. I think we're done now. Okay, let's search this banquet hall, I guess. These guys didn't really have anything interesting. There is a lot of booze though. 
Is that a voxophone there on the bar? Indeed it is. Let's pick it up. And when the angel Columbia gave onto the founders the tools to build a new Eden, they did so without hesitation. For 85 years they prepared the way of the Lord. But when the great apostate came, he brought war with him. And the fields of Eden were soaked with the blood of brothers. The only emancipation he had to offer was death. I didn't really understand who he's referring to, to be honest. Oh, I get it now. So they're revering John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. And Comstock is accusing Lincoln of starting the Civil War, not the least of its consequences being the abolishment of slavery. They are really leaning on the racism angle here. Okay, I think we are done searching the first floor. Let's go upstairs. This door looks a bit creepy. Well, nothing happened. This looks like a great location for throwing an AOE trap. That was extremely effective. The more for your money achievement is about hitting at least 3 enemies with a single trap. We actually got it to count 3 times just from this single use. What the? Did those guys spawn on top of me? They don't really have a lot of health so they shouldn't be too difficult to kill. Ok, let's go back to the achievement counters that popped up. The other one we saw is for the well-rounded achievement. We don't have to worry about that one, it's just about using each vigor on at least one enemy. Now, in order to go down to the altar I guess, we need to use these stairs. And there are even more racist slogans down there. I wonder if we'll get any new enemies to spawn once we get there. There are some loot boxes from the enemies that were killed by that trap. Oh, and there is an infusion on that altar. Okay, enough of the racist crap. Let's go pick up the infusion. We'll keep upgrading the shield until we max it out at 10. Then we'll start upgrading our souls. I'm not really concerned about health. If our current health is not enough in a certain fight, a bit of an increase wouldn't have helped anyway. We've also picked up a very special key, but I'll talk more about it once we listen to this voxophone. What exactly was the great emancipator emancipating the Negro from? From his daily bread, from the nobility of honest work, from wealthy patrons who sponsored them from cradle to grave, from clothing and shelter. And what have they done with their freedom? Why, go to Finkton and you shall find out. No animal is born free, except the white man. And it is our burden to care for the rest of creation. Can we go kill that guy now? Seriously? Back to the key we just got. There is a couple of optional quests we can complete in the game. This is the first of them. We will need to go back a bit until we reach the house we can use this key on. Keep in mind that we need to finish this quest before we leave the area. Otherwise, we can't go back to it. I guess now that we know who he was, it's appropriate to see his statue covered in shit. Anyway, the optional quest's go is not that far from here, so let's make a little detour and go there. We'll need every resource we can find in order to complete the game. First, we'll have to go back to that square. I wonder if the enemies will have respawned. Yeah, looks like they have. I see only three guys so far. Nice! They didn't stand a chance. The machine gun is a pretty good weapon. It's not incredibly powerful, but it is accurate and has good range. There seems to be one more policeman left. Where is he though? He's not coming out, so I guess we'll have to go find him. Still not seeing him. 
Where is he hiding? Ah, there he is. Wow, he actually managed to live much longer than his buddies. Okay, now that we're done here, let's go back to the house of the equal rights activists. The house where we can use the key is opposite their terrace. We'll just need to use the crane again to swing there. Hmm. Did I miss looting these boxes last time? I guess I must have. Looks like the activists have escaped. Can't say I blame them. Okay, we've reached the terrace. Now we just need to go left of here. There it is. We need to reach the open door in that balcony. We'll just need to hook on that crane and drop to the balcony. We could have gone there when we were here last time, but without the key, there's not much we could have gained. Let's start things off by picking the money in this bag. Anything else interesting here? Maybe something in the cabinet? No, nothing. The vanity is empty as well. Let's go downstairs. Looks like there's an open room to the left and another one on the right. Let's go check them out. We'll start with the one on the left. Oh, so it's just a toilet. An empty toilet. Okay, so there's a voxophone in this room, as well as a chest with a familiar emblem. Otis works up at the lodge part-time. He took this box from one of their secret ceremonies. And I know for sure, there is something dear inside. Problem is, Otis is more fool than not. He didn't bother to also secure a key from the Feathered Brothers to open the damn thing. Okay, so we needed the key from the Fraternal Order of the Raven in order to unlock this chest. The voxophone we found in this room is actually a hint about where to find this key. Now, while the quest is completely optional, getting that infusion is kind of important, so it's very much worth our time completing it. That dude was very chill considering we're breaking into his home. Unless... he's a thief as well? Well, whatever. This purse was the last thing we needed from this house, so we can go back outside now. We need to go back to the Raven guys in order to complete this level. We haven't done much, so there shouldn't be any new enemies spawned. Hopefully. This is a nice bedroom, though. Okay, so we need to hook up to that crane again. And now we'll just drop down. Back through the Equal Rights Activist house and onto the square. That's the wrong direction. Nothing's changed in the meantime. Okay, nice. No new enemies have spawned. We should just sprint the rest of the way. Basically, we need to go back to the altar and take the right exit when we reach it. So we're going past the statue. And then straight ahead through the doors and up the stairs. Through these doors is the hole with the altar. We can just jump over the railings. There is fall damage, but it's quite lenient. We won't get hurt from a mere 5 meters fall. And over here is the door to the other part of the frat house. Famous now, though I'd say we've killed considerably more than 8 peacemakers. Anyways, I think it's about time we have a nice boss fight. I'm not saying we're going to have one, but it's about time we did. Sounds like there's a vending machine somewhere around here. Yeah, there it is. Unfortunately, it's another door bill machine, so we can't really use it. This looks like some kind of a meeting room. Why is there light coming from behind this bookcase? Is that a secret passage? Huh, how cliche. 
Let's see. What do we have here? Okay, there's a gear in front of us. Anything else interesting? Let's check this barrel. Nothing. There is a purse next to the gear. Nice. Now let's see what the gear is. Yeah, I'm not really interested in melee gear. Let's see what's in the crates. Just a bit of food. Is this some kind of a cell? Okay, well, this secret passage wasn't as exciting as I hoped, but at least we got some money and gear. There's another room in front of us we can check and some stairs on the right. We also have some money on the table as well as a salt file. Nothing too terribly interesting. Let's search this room now. Okay, there are some desks here. And is that a box of... Yes, indeed! Sweet mother of Columbia. Why do we worship three symbols in your memory? We worship the sword so that we might avenge you. We worship the raven so that we might cover the city with eyes. We worship the coffin because it symbolizes the weight of our faith. Okay, that was certainly very useful info. I am getting a bad feeling. Gruesome. Hey, where are you going? Hmm, so that was the new enemy. Probably the same class as the fireman. I'm pretty sure we'll need to fight him. How about we try the Devil's Kiss Trap again? No for anybody. Here he comes. Nice, he appeared pretty much on top of the trap. This new type of enemy is similar to the Houdini Splicers. He can teleport using the Ravens. He seems to only have melee attacks though, making it a bit easier to deal with. It's a new kind of vigor. Murder of crows, huh? Sounds interesting. The animations of getting a new vigor are really cool. Let's watch the demo video now. Press to summon murderous crows. Hold and release to create a nest trap. So that's basically a stun vigor. Quite useful. Especially since only machines are immune to this vigor. Let's try it out on these guys. We have a small health kit and a salt file on this table we can use after we finish with them. Good, that's another count towards the well-rounded achievement. The vigor doesn't really do any damage, but the stun duration is not bad. And the area effect of the trap is quite substantial. How oh, they've sent quite a lot of policemen against us. Nice, we have another salt file over there. Looks like we'll be able to complete this level with full health and salt. I don't hear anything, so I guess we must have killed them all. Which means it's time to loot the corpses. And after we do that, it's finally time to get out of this frat house. Let's go up these stairs. Oh nice, there's another gear here. As well as a vending machine that doesn't seem to be working. Hey, another melee gear. There's nothing else here, so let's go through this door. Wait, what? How did they even make this stuff up? Anyways, it looks like we'll have to go crane hopping again. The fact that they don't know what we look like is good, I guess. Though the AD tattoo kinda gives us away. Can't we find some gloves or something? Oh, we have a telescope on this barge. Nice. That's another one for the sightseer achievement. We're probably meant to go there, but how do we do that? Yeah, that's the Monument Island. Okay, there's another crane over there, so I guess we'll just be jumping on them. Before we continue, let's drop down and see if this door is locked as well. And yes, it seems it is. 
How about these crates then? Just some food and ammo we don't need. Let's get back on the crane. There is an open door on that terrace inviting us to enter the house. This looks to be the pantry. And this is obviously the kitchen. We haven't found anything interesting so far. I mean, a couple of silver eagles is always nice, but I was hoping for something more. Okay, sounds like there are people downstairs. I'm not sure it's a good idea to show ourselves to the police, to be honest. But I see a person at that desk, and there are probably more items in that room. I guess I should preemptively kill them. Nice, that was three more kills for the machine gun achievement. Hmm, who's that on the portrait? He looks vaguely familiar. Anyway, since we've killed all the policemen, at least we should finish robbing the house. Okay, I think there's nothing left, so let's get out of here. Once we go back on that terrace, there's just one more crane left before we reach Monument Island. Even though it was a bit of a waste of time, I kinda enjoy being able to just enter a random house in Colombia and look for some items. I even wish we could enter more of them. We're back outside, so let's use the sky who can finally reach Monument Island. There's just a single policeman guarding it? Oh no, there are more, we just didn't see them. There's one upstairs. No one else is coming out, so let's check this crate. And now we can loot this corpse. Was it really just these two? Hmm. <laughs> if the prophet is the real deal, shouldn't he know I'm going after the girl in the tower? Shouldn't he have placed tighter security around Monument Island then? Of course, this could all be a trap, I guess. Let's find out. We just need to climb these stairs to reach the entrance to Monument Island. There's some more ammo and a large health kit on this crate. A couple of silver eagles in the crate itself, and it doesn't seem like there's anything else particularly interesting. Let's search this trash can before we go through the door, since that will end the level. Okay, there's nothing else here, so let's enter the station. Well, this is it for today's episode. Thank you for spending your time with me and if you have enjoyed it, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It will really help me a lot. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, I would love to hear from you. Take care and until next time.